off to the Mulawati we go, which is not exactly ideal. Although, the good news is that apparently our additions to the Chitwa Mast, they're picking, up, uh, picking us up loud and clear from there, which means that hopefully we will be have much better coverage in the Mulawati. And certainly Chitwa Dam is now lo no longer going to be the Gremlin minefield. We've come guns blazing and we've now chased those gremlins away from that area. So we should be able to spend a lot more quality time at Chitwa Dam without having to worry too much. And the same hopefully will ring true for the Mulawati as well. Monique in London. Hello, Monique. And, well, I actually met Monique a few days ago. Monique was here in South Africa on a trip, and she was at Juma. So, hello, Monique. I hope you had a safe travel home and that you are still on a high from your trip and from being here. And you want to know if Tumba is my favorite leopard. Well, Monique, we shared a sighting together of Tumba when you were here. And, yes, he is most definitely my favorite leopard. I absolutely love spending time with him. He is beautiful and, well, he's intriguing. He's always moving. He's always up to something. And so I certainly love spending time with him he's my favorite of the male leopards let's put it that way um i think of of the younger generation anderson of the older generation and tandy of the female generation those are my three favorites monique and monique and i were talking about the weather because i always say to her that i hope it's not a bad day in london and that it's sunny and warm and she always says to me that generally when i say that it's raining so i hope it's not raining today monique and that you're having a good day But little Tumba is off on here. What have you spotted? Seems they like spotted something. And I'm so surprised. This has got to be the first time that I've ever spent that long at Twin Dams and we haven't seen an impala come down to drink or any animal whatsoever. Maybe Tumba's been hanging around all day and the animals just know that there's some sort of predator. And with Tundi being here last night and yesterday afternoon, maybe they're all a little bit cautious of what's going on at this stage and that's why none came down to drink. But I'm so glad that he's moving north because, well, it means that probably tomorrow morning, in all likelihood, we might be able to find him again, which is fantastic. Now, for all of you that watch the dam cam, before I forget, because I keep forgetting about this, there was monkeys alarm calling the whole day today around the lodge. There's elephants that have been vocalizing like they've seen something. So I would check the dam cam fairly regularly this evening. You never know. Maybe Tundi ended up that side or maybe there is some sign of another leopard that could be there. I know that Mvula and Tingana were seen yesterday on Arethusa, but you never know. Today is a new day and they might have already by now crossed back towards Juma. So good idea would be to watch the dam cam tonight. You never know. You might get lucky and we might get another cat on the dam cam for all of you. In terms of lion updates, no sign of the Nkuma Pride yet. Nobody's found them, so I think they've crossed into Manuleti. The Styx Pride is south, directly south of us on the Mulawati, and one of the Birmingham's with them, so they're all down that edge. Now, don't go over there. You can go on top there and lie down. There we go. Okay, lie down there. Mm, no. So for him to go on top, I don't know, Seb, do you want to stay this side or go around the other side? There's not much space on the other side, so I think we're just going to stick with him on this side and try and get round. Although I don't know if I can get round. I keep forgetting now. Sitting down. Not like too much, so Seb, I'm sorry if the light bounces around, but there we go, that's better. Now I don't have to worry about the spotlights and shine it into his eyes. The floodlights work a lot better. This is fantastic. You can hear our elephant whinging in the distance again. I wonder if it's the same Ellie that was whinging earlier and complaining. There we go. Nice screenshots as well with the dark background. So... Dina, you also were here last week. Hello, Dina. I hope you're well as well. And I see that you got back safely. I've seen lots of your pictures being posted online. And you got some really lovely photographs. And you say, have I noticed the heart-shaped marking on his front leg? Dina, to be honest, I haven't noticed it. If maybe you do have a picture of it and you, if you can send it to me, I would love to actually see which leg and where exactly this heart shape is doesn't get better than this he's walking straight towards us and he's going to lie down right there <laughs> this is so cool I can never get tired of this ever 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 
We really do have the best job in the whole world. Wow. Just when I thought he was going to disappear on us around the other side and I wasn't sure if we were going to follow him, he comes walking straight back to where I am and sits down right next to me as if to say, well, you know what, you've been patient with me all afternoon, I'm going to just come and give you one last show. Also, he's sniffing around, maybe he can smell his mom on that particular plant. Seb, I'm going to move back just slightly, ever so slightly, just so that we don't have as much shadow on his leg area. Oh, look at that, Seb. That is absolutely spectacular. Now, I might take a, a little illegal photograph, maybe, just maybe, because, well, it's not going to be every day that we get to see... be nice to have him just sit and recline up there now Aubrey's just wanting to find out where Tambe is so I'm just gonna quickly give him an update so that he knows Aubrey Aubrey, Aubrey. Aubrey 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 yeah Aubrey Tambe's just static now you know where they put this dugger from the um, from Tundams on the bank of the Mulawati on the western bank. He's just static on top of this dagger now. No, if I may, it's fire fire visual, very nice. So there we go. Let Aubrey know, which will help Aubrey, and he's got some photographers with him, so I would be happy to help him and to get him here. And ultimately, the only reason we're seeing Tumba today is because Aubrey and Tax managed to track him down this morning so we'll repay the favor and just help them out and let them come into the area as well oh, look at the size of the paw though as he grooms it what are you watching around for now for those of you that want a beautiful screenshot hopefully he's going to open his eye at some point as he grooms and that will be the business shot for sure No, he's going to get up now, I think, and maybe potentially move on. Yep, there we go. He's posed enough for us now. He's decided onward I'm going. Or are you going to sit on top there, rather? No, not sure yet. Yes, that's where we're going to sit, rather. Right, let's try and reposition. Cheryl, are you wondering if Tumba and Hosanna ran into each other, would they interact? When was it? It was about... She apparently stole the kill from Tumba and Tandi and fed on it and the two of them watched for a while and then he had a full and eventually Tumba came and he was able to get his full as well so they have had an interactive experience already now we're not going to be able to get over here so we're gonna have to go back again which is a bit of a shame i thought maybe just maybe we could get through here but it seems as though it's all the way now seb can you see behind me because with this light on i can't see a single thing can i keep turning left because i want to turn around straight so oh there we go that's actually all right seb it's okay, we can stay right here because he's facing us. So nothing wrong with that. There we go. So there's our beautiful boy sitting on top of... No, don't face that way. Now hopefully he'll turn around and face us again. He's almost facing over the back end of this at the moment. Just checking to see what's on the other side. Which is, I suppose, fair enough if he will turn around eventually but you can see how as the night has fallen he's got a lot more active he's listening he's looking and he's moving around and he's gotten himself to a higher position so since the night has fallen up onto a mound up onto this bank over here where he can then at least have some height advantage 
to be able to see what's going on. Sky, the reason why they sit and groom themselves so much is because as they walk through this long grass, they tend to pick up things like ticks and mites. And so the grooming is to get rid of all of that. It's to keep the coat in good condition, keep their, their fur nice and clean, and get rid of any little bits of loose fur as well as any parasites that may potentially be on them so that they stay as a healthy animal. Too many parasites, and they could then potentially get quite ill. So much better for them to actually try and clean themselves as regularly as possible and keep themselves nice and healthy. You'll also find that if they fed on a carcass, there's bits of meat which rots and could potentially cause disease. So it's better for them to actually clean more often than not. I think he's decided that's where he's going to sleep for now. I don't think he's going to move too much just yet unless there's a sound that stirs him. So if he hears maybe a potential prey animal or if he hears mom or if he hears other leopards or potentially lions, that would probably be the only thing that's really going to wake him. I think for now, though, it's going to be more about just relaxing. John, you're asking if I think animals ever get bored. Most certainly. I think especially young animals like this. Um, not so much your antelope species because they tend to walk all day and they stay with the herds and their mothers and they tend to move around a lot. But leopards and lions get left in places. And, well, they're curious animals. They're exuberant. They're youthful. And if you're at a puppy or a kitten, you know they're playful and they, they don't like being there for long periods of time. And so they do get bored. You can see it. And sometimes they sit with this little bit of a grumpy face and they wait. Leg there. So there we go. So now, no matter how much we see him, even if we can't see a head and we can see a leg, that will be forever an identifying feature for him, like Tinkana with his little smiley face on his shoulder. tumbler has got a little heart. Does Hosanna have anything? I wonder if any of you guys can give me a leg marking for Hosanna. I wonder if the little prince has also got some sort of quirky little marking on his leg that we can use to ID him. I, Hosanna always just, I don't know why, I can see him from a long way away. He always looks fairly easy. He's got the butterfly on his forehead. That's how I remember him. There's those two markings that if you kind of, or a bow tie is also what I've heard people calling it. But that's the sort of giveaway. But I don't know of any markings on his leg like this that are quirky and quite entertaining. Lovely Lori, you want to know why we don't chip the animals to make them easier to find? Well, there's a number of reasons for it. Uh, the, the biggest reason for me is that to chip an animal means we've got to interfere in its life means that we've got to dart it, we've got to then put it in, and really I don't think that's the way that we should be doing things. At the end of the day, these animals give so much to us as it is. We get to see them, we get to spend time with them, we've built up this relationship of trust where they don't move away from us because we're sitting with them and for long periods and we don't hurt them and don't chase them away. That I think it would be sacrilege to break all of that by darting them and trying to chip them. Also, it would take away from the whole fun of and the eventual reward when you find an animal that chipping one would just I don't know it would make it feel more like a zoo and would take away the absolute experience that is a safari and the way that we go about doing things in the world then just driving around and going okay I'm gonna go to the lion now then I'm gonna go to the leopard then I'm gonna go to the cheetah then I'm gonna you know that to me is just I might as well go to a zoo and walk around than to actually be in a wild place where animals are moving, you don't know where they're moving, and it's a chance of luck. That's how I see it. And I'm sure other people might differ, but for me, that's the way it should be. These animals should, their rights and their way of life should come first before any of our wants and desires, and we should most certainly respect their space and, and their life, not to be able to monitor them constantly by putting chips in them. Where I do have no problem with a chip is in a situation where you've either released animals into an environment where they've 
formally become extinct and, and are now being reintroduced and you need to research and monitor that population to make sure that they're not being poached, fair enough, got no problem with that. Or in terms of research of endangered animals where there's really limited populations and certain populations are doing better than others and they research that and they chip them to be able to monitor them in a far better way than tracking finding them. But as far as a safari purpose and as, as far as what we do in Safari Live, most certainly chipping animals would feel as though we've defeated the whole purpose of it and certainly defeated the way that we do things. things. Eric the Poet, you say that you think there's a bromance between myself and Tumba. Well, I think it's a one-sided bromance at this stage, Eric. I think uh, it's pretty much all from my side. Tumba doesn't seem remotely interested in me, although he has spent a lot of time and we were talking about it. It's interesting. I would love to actually know who's had the most sightings of Tumba. I think that we probably, myself and Seb, would probably be the combo that has seen Tumba more than probably any of the other presenters on Safari Live, which is quite strange. Um, I suppose I also do go looking for him more. I try and find him as much as I can, and if there's any track of him anywhere near the area, I certainly try and go and find him. So maybe, maybe he likes to spend time around us. He certainly is very chilled around us. So, But I think the bromance at this stage is a bit more of a one-way street than anything else. So... I'll just have to take it. I'm sure Ali won't mind sharing for a while. Seb, you've got a bit of a bromance with Tamba as well. Oh, yes, for sure. Now, I believe some of you are calling him a heartbreaker because of his marking there. Well, I think later in life he's going to be a bit of a heartbreaker. He's certainly going to be a popular amongst the ladies if he becomes a dominant male. He's going to be big, he's going to be gold, he's going to have beautiful eyes, and, well, who doesn't like a tall, strapping tanned man in the lady world what do you think Seb you think the ladies are going to like him yeah, for, sure. for sure there's no doubt <laughs> is what Seb yeah. says He's gonna be the Casanova of the Northern <laughs> so Seb in true fashion in true French romantic fashion has said that Tambe will be like the Casanova of the Sabi Sands later in life well we're seized Seb I think you might be right so <laughs> we'll just have to see how that all plays out now Alice sorry I was so busy <laughs> laughing at Seb that I didn't hear your question so if you can repeat it and I can't find the radio for FC either it's buried and a whole bunch of other stuff so if you can repeat the question please Tony you want to know how many of the leopards we've named or that we have here at Juma Whew, Tony okay well let's go through them so these are all let's go through the ones that we see regularly and that are have a territory held within the Juma system. So we've got Tumba and Tandi, first off, since we're sitting with little Tumba. Then we've got Shadow and her cub, her little female cub. By the way, still no updates on Shadow. No one's found her today. I have asked around, but we certainly will keep an ear out and I certainly will inform everybody as soon as I do know about them. So that's four. Then we've got Tingana, Mvula, that's six in Chila. Um, we've got, oof, now I've got to try and think. Who else comes onto this area? Hosanna Shongile, so that's nine. There's Kojima, is ten to our north. Then we've got potentially Quarantine in Kanyeni, so that's twelve. Um, who else is around? Kuchava, thirteen. Potentially Anderson. When we traversed Arathusa, we did also see Tiani and Salahesh, which would take us to a whopping total of sixteen. And that is an area of about 1200 hectares so that is not if you compare it to the Masai Mara which is 120,000 hectares where all those lines occur to have 16 leopards in 1200 hectares is a serious density it is a very 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 high density and we are very fortunate that we're in an area like this and this particular winter has been super good to us we've had really great sightings of leopard and I thought we were going to go through a quiet phase when we didn't have Karula when Karula disappeared I thought maybe we we're going to be in a bit of trouble but all of those leopards have come to the party at some point. We haven't seen too many sightings of quarantine or Kuchava or in Kanyeni since we've stopped being on Cheetah Plains, but we do have Tandi and Tamba that have really saved us and have moved into this area and have become a permanent fixture, really, of our safari. We seem to find them every few days or at least signs of them, and so they're a really special part of the southeastern corner of Juma, and Shadow has become a very special part of the southwestern corner, and then Hosan and Shongile moving around in the central section. So we've been very fortunate in that regard, and we've got really nice, nice density of leopard 
Emreel, you want to know if we've got, um, sorry, if the females are as territorial as the males. Um, most certainly. So Shadow and Tandi will, will clash should they come together. Um, same way as they clashed with their mother Karula, you know, they used to push each other around and Tandi didn't come into this area and Tumba didn't come into this area because of that reason. Because Karula was here, she was scent marking, she was vocalizing, both her daughters knew that this space was taken. Once that stopped, that's what's allowed Tandi and Shadow to push in and to utilize this and to start taking this territory. At the end of the day, this is a good territory to have. Lots of water, lots of prey animals. You've got the Mulawati Riverbed, which is perfect leopard den, uh, habitat and den site um, places. So you'll find that they are very territorial and they will try and push each other away. And once a female leopard pushes out her daughter, like in the case of Karula and Tandi, you'll find that that bond is severed straight away and they will become quite aggressive towards one another in the protection of their area and, and their resources that they utilize. So it's not only the males in the leopard world, the females are the same, same as with lions. You'll find female lions will also push male lions, I mean other female prides away. Chastity, you're wondering if leopards uh, claw mark trees to mark territory. No, not really, Chastity. They, they do claw mark on trees just to sharpen the claws and keep the claws in good condition, but not really to mark territory. When they mark territory, they will rub their face, so they'll use a preorbital gland that's just underneath the eyes that marks territory on the actual plant, and then they will also scent mark by the form of urine. So either they're going to scrape their back legs, scent mark on that scraping, and that marking will then soak into the soil and be able to stay there for a longer period of time. Also, some of the urine will be on the feet and they will then carry that forward or they're going to spray up onto a bush on the edge of a pathway or a road that another leopard potentially would walk and then would pick it up and smell okay this is where there is another leopard and that signature will be unique for any individual that uses either their orbital gland or their um, urine so no matter what scent they use it will be a completely different signature for everybody and they will then be able to work it out and what's amazing is that these leopards even though they can't communicate can work out if it's male female is it in heat is it dominant is it young all from that chemical signature through their organ of Jacobson in the roof of their mouth which is absolutely astounding it amazes me every time that they can do that I think little Tamba you can see he's listening to the car approaching so we've got somebody joining us finally this evening which has really been quite amazing that no one's been here oh hello boy did somebody wake you up oh you're going to put your head on the other side <laughs> you might look over his shoulder now when the car comes as he's just done there we go now hopefully he's going to oh no he's put his head back again So I don't think he's going to look over his shoulder again with the light. I think he's happy to have his eyes in darkness and sleeping. Had a quick little look around his shoulder just to check what was going on. And then from there decided, nope, I think it's better in the darkness to face that way. So he then put his head back around. And there we go. But it is absolutely beautiful when he sits like that with his face... And that light. Now I believe a lot of you have been getting incredible screenshots this afternoon and well I would imagine not only from Tumba but from the lion kills that we've James has witnessed to the beautiful scenery of the Masai Mara. It has just been a wonderful wonderful day. We've been absolutely spoilt by Mother Nature. And particularly this cat. He's been a rock star. Take care. You're asking which leopard snores the loudest. Take care. I have no idea. To be honest, I've never spent enough time around all of them to know who snores the loudest. Tingana has a little snore that goes, and Anderson used to snore quite a bit. But I've never heard many of the others, so I'm not... Jody, you're asking if I've ever had the pleasure of naming one of the leopards. Jody, 
I actually haven't, and I and I tell you why. I I've been asked to a few times, but I actually just haven't done it because it's not a huge thing for me. I I know that it will be for a lot of other people, but for me, just the joy of actually seeing a leopard is more than having to give it a name. I I feel like as long as I get privileged enough to see them and to spend time around them, then for me that's more than enough. And and the gift that I get from them is being able to see them. It's not in giving them a name. So that's why I really haven't done it before. I'm certainly not that I'm sneezing at the opportunity to do it. It's just that for me, it's okay not to name one and to be able to just enjoy them as an animal that's out here and that I'm fortunate enough to see. So I was involved in, they asked me to try and come up with names for Tiani, for Enchila. In fact, Enchila, I was. Big, bright, big eyes, pink little nose. Oh, you are a special cat, little Tumba. I think we can all safely say that he has given us probably one of the best leopard sightings that we have seen of this particular animal in a long time. Certainly can't think of one that's topped what I've had this afternoon. Just in terms of where he's lay, he's lay out in the open the whole afternoon. We've seen him looking at birds. He's been curious. He's been busy. It's been a wonderful, wonderful section. Well, afternoon. And I believe Lou in the Mara agrees with me. Well, Lou, you must have had a fun time in FC this afternoon because, well, you've seen the most incredible lion hunting. You've got a leopard over my shoulder at the moment that's posed beautifully. So it seems as though it's been a good day at the office today for all of us involved. I'm sure Seb's had a fun day as well. We had incredible. this. There we go. Incredible, according to Seb.